Welcome to the third week of the course Designing a Climate Neutral World. In the following videos you will learn how to analyze emission reduction options, often referred to as mitigation in the climate change community. So this first video will introduce two concepts, mitigation potential and mitigation cost. Thus we have two main questions we will aim to answer. Whenever discussing mitigation options, we can ask ourselves how much CO2 does a certain option mitigate? And second, how much does it cost per ton of mitigated CO2 emissions? These are two important questions, but they are not the only questions that are relevant. In a later video, we will come back to some other elements that also play a role in the decision-making process when discussing mitigation. In this first video, we will focus on the determination of potentials. Let's first give a definition of mitigation potential. So, the mitigation potential is simply the quantity of net greenhouse gas emissions that can be achieved by a given mitigation option. A mitigation option can be anything like home insulation, application of wind energy or eating less meat. We talk about net greenhouse gas emission reduction because not only there are options that reduce CO2 emissions, but there are also options that extract CO2 from the atmosphere, and some that do both. It is important to always specify the baseline against which emission reductions are counted. We will get back to that later in this video. First, we consider a technical potential, which has two constraints and one of it is all kinds of theoretical limits. There are limits to the size of the land or the size of the earth. There are thermodynamic limits to conversion efficiencies of all kinds of energy conversion equipments. It is also limited by what is technologically feasible at a given moment. At a given moment we have a maximum conversion efficiency, for example, of solar panels, or we have a maximum savings that can be achieved with certain types of technology that are available at a certain moment in time. The theoretical limits normally do not change over time, but the technologies of course can improve by innovation and new products that are invented and brought to the market. A small disclaimer here. Sometimes also non-technical constraints are occasionally taken into account when determining the mitigation potential especially if they make up strong barriers against the realization of the potential. The second type of potential that we use is the economic potential. The economic potential is part of the technical potential, so it's always smaller. We only take that part for which the benefits are larger than the costs, so the part that is attractive in economic terms. We not only include pure monetary costs and benefits, but we use a broader definition to include all social costs and benefits. We'll, we'll get back later to what this means. Let's do an example calculation of the technical mitigation potential. For example, you want to estimate what is the technical potential for photovoltaic solar energy, also known as a PV system on your roof, for which we have a number of assumptions. We assume that your roof is self-oriented, it has the right, the right inclination, and the surface is 10 square meters. The question is then, what is the technical potential for solar energy for your home? The annual solar radiation on your roof is 1500 kWh per square meter, and assume that the conversion efficiency of available solar modules is now 20%. By installing a solar system, you will avoid production by fossil power plants. And assume that in your country the emission factor of electricity from the grid is 0.4 kg per kilowatt hour. Now you can calculate the mitigation potential by multiplying these numbers to obtain 1200 kg of emissions. These are the emissions from the grid avoided by the maximum application of solar energy on your roof. It's good to also discuss here a number of related issues that have to do with the definition of technical potential. You may say, yes, I have now calculated the potential on the southern part of my roof, but the northern part may also be suitable for the installation of solar panels. 
but the solar radiation on the northern facing surface is very low, so it wouldn't contribute much and it seems very unattractive in economic terms. It is then not uncommon to exclude the northern surface from the technical potential. This is an example of the disclaimer added in the definition of technical potential. Another point may that you say, I don't have the money to invest in a solar energy system. That is not a reason to exclude the option. PV panels may become cheaper or the government may provide a subsidy. Anyway, always be transparent on how a technical potential is calculated and uh, the underlying assumptions and exclusions. One point that I want to touch upon is that baseline is important. The baseline is the starting position from which you determine the emission reduction potentials. If you talk about insulation of your home or solar energy on your roof, your, your baseline is probably quite simple. The baseline is to take no action, meaning no solar energy and no insulation. But if you look at a town or a country, there are a number of things that are important. If you look at the future, there will always be an increase in activity levels. For example, an increase in the building stock. Emissions will grow. You see that depicted here with the orange line. This is how emissions would develop due to the increase in activity. For example, the number of buildings would increase and, and they would be similar to the existing buildings. We call that frozen technology. That will likely not occur for a number of reasons. First of all, part of these homes will be newer homes. They already have better insulation because of the changed building standards. But also in addition, there will be at least some people that plan to insulate their walls or install solar panels. This is what we call the business as usual development. The emissions associated with this will probably be substantially lower than in the case of the frozen technology scenario. So it is important to always clarify what baseline is used. When we look into the future, it is always important to acknowledge that the mitigation potential can change over time. Technologies can improve, thus leading to an increase of the technical potential. For example, if solar panels would become available with a conversion efficiency of 30%, the solar energy mitigation for potential for your home would substantially increase. Similarly, cost reduction of technologies may lead to an increase of the economic potential. Having discussed today's topics, we come to several conclusions. Firstly, calculation of mitigation potential should always be about what can be done with maximum efforts. But sometimes other constraints are taken into account. And that is why it seems that the concept of potential is straightforward, but there are some pitfalls in the actual application. Last but not least, transparency about assumptions and assumed constraints is key.